Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for November 2016. I have two build part lists for you guys today using PC Part Picker. Uh, one is a mini ITX build at a $3,100 price point, the fastest mini ITX gaming PC I could put together. And then one is a much more reasonably priced one at about $1,100, both mini ITX. And both of these are of course based on your feedback from last month's uh, build video, which was asking these questions. And you guys all voted on this one here at the top. Uh, I do have another uh, straw poll linked in the description down below. You guys should check that out for what you want to see in December. Have a bunch of them listed here, including a green and red Christmas themed PC, an updated uh, entry level X99 build. That one's thanks to Thershigan Guna, uh, who posted that suggestion in the comments from last month's video. So thank you for that. Uh, but let's get right into it because I have actually been out of the country for a couple weeks and I may be suffering the ill effects of jet lag at any moments. So let's start with the, the $3,100 fastest possible mini ITX gaming PC. Of course, I went with an i7 6700K. And the reason for that is because it's probably the fastest CPU you can get for gaming. Now there is an X99 motherboard you can get that is mini ITX. It's made by ASRock. It is called the X99 E ITX slash AC. But I ruled that out because this is a gaming build. And for gaming, I think the 6700K is a better choice even than some of the uh, Intel enthusiast level chips. Now if this was an all around PC or something that you were gonna be using for workstation or video editing or something, then yes, that might be a better option. Now of course, we do need an, uh, a, a water cooler for this CPU. Uh, you could go with an air cooler, but I decided to go with water cooling since this build is a little bit over the top. Uh, the processor is coming in at around $330 depending where you buy it. The water cooler I went with is an NZXT Kraken X31. Um, and this is 120 millimeters, so it's going to fit a little bit better in some of the cases uh, that you might choose for mini ITX builds. Um, and it's got a smaller size little pump and block mechanism down there at the bottom, um, which I went with mainly because, well, uh, I, I needed it to fit on the mini ITX motherboard that I chose, which was this Asus Maximus 8 Impact. Uh, this is going to cost you around 230 to $240, again, depending where you buy it. And this one is limited a bit around the CPU socket because it has these vertical areas here uh, that it gives extra power delivery for, uh, as well as that Supreme Effects audio module that's sticking up right there. This, this zoom function really is not doing much for me here on the Newegg website, but anyway, you can still see it there. So there's a little bit more limited space around the uh, socket, but uh, the benefits you get with this board, even though it's mini ITX, are that it's gonna be a really good overclocker, and it's also gonna have much better audio than you might get on pretty much any other mini ITX board. And that is a limitation of mini ITX boards uh, because you don't have an extra expansion slot, assuming that you're using a graphics card to drop a sound card into, for example. Now for the memory, I went with the simple, I, I was gonna do a, a, one of the PC part picker parametric filters for this, but I just went with this Corsair Vengeance LPX two by 16 gig kit. This is DDR4-2666. And I mean, I, I have this stuff right here and it, it's pretty much just really basic Simple, black, looks good, gets a job done. If you find other memory that you think looks better, then go for it because um, it's not gonna be a huge difference to the overall performance. Um, what is gonna impact performance though, apart mainly from the graphics card and the CPU, is your storage. And here's where I actually had a tough choice to make because um, when you look at mini ITX boards, you can find ones that have M.2 slots on them. Uh, this board from uh, Asus actually has a U.2, which is like right down here. And they went with U.2 instead of M.2. So I was kind of torn at first. I was like, maybe I should go with the mini ITX board that has an M.2, because there are faster uh, uh, M.2 drives than, than U.2 drives. This one is the Intel SS or 750 series. I went with the 400 gig version. This is gonna have like the little plug on it and then a little breakout thing, and it's, it's got a 2.5 inch drive. And then you gotta sort of connect the little mini SAS there and the little adapter and the power and all that good stuff. But it is a very fast SSD NVMe and it's faster than any SATA drive that you can plop in there. Now, for those of you who are saying you should have gone with the Samsung 950 Pro, I hear you. That is a bit faster than the 750, but I can't fit that on this board because it's only got U.2 and I opted for the better overclocking and the sound rather than that. So that was a toss up. That was definitely a difficult choice, but um, this is what I went with. So 
I'm stuck with it. Uh, the Crucial MX300 I added in there for additional storage. This is a two terabyte drive and it's uh, just just $500 or just under $500 if you can find it for that much. But it's a two terabyte SSD and that's pretty drool, wor drool worthy. So gives you about 2.4 terabytes of total storage and it's all SSD storage. And then you have a graphics card, which is the Titan X Pascal because it's the fastest gaming PC possible mini ITX form factor. Uh, I like actually the NVIDIA cooler for the Titan XP and for their, their reference cooler for the Founders Edition because it is a blower style, style cooler and that is often a better bet to go with if you're going with a smaller form factor or something that's more cramped because it's kind of got its own little airflow system and it's not going to contaminate the rest of the case with warm air. And then of course it is the fastest gaming card really that you can get right now, especially if you overclock it, um, at least until the 1080 Ti comes out, if and when that does happen. Now bear in mind, you need, do need to buy this directly from the NVIDIA website, and yes, it is $1,200, which is really, really expensive. But when you say go for the fastest thing you can, then things get expensive, so there you go. Uh, case is a Corsair 380T. I agonized over the case decision. I was gonna go with the N-Case M1. I think it's the M1. The N-Case uh, is a cool little mini ITX uh, case, but it's actually not listed on PC Part Picker. And uh, I went with the 380T mainly because even though it's a little bit larger for a mini ITX case, it has really good airflow. Uh, it especially has like a ventilated side uh, right here for the intake for your uh, for the graphics card for the Titan XP. Uh, and it's got the freaking carrying handle on the top. And I always say if you're gonna build a mini ITX system, uh, portability is often like a really nice Thing to have for that so I like mini ITX cases that have handles makes them a little bit more portable uh, and then of course it's got space for uh, your drives right here it actually has space for 3.5 inch drives but that will fit the slightly thicker 2.5 inch Intel 750 series you do need to have a slightly uh, slimmer or at least not as, as as thick not as deep I'm not I'm not using the right words here the power supply should be thin so I did go with the thinner Power supply in the Silverstone Strider Titanium, 700 watts. Uh, this is about $135. The case and the power supply are fairly expensive here. Um, at least there are other options. But, you know, I was it was an expensive system, so I was like, screw it. We'll go with that. Silverstone makes some really nice, uh, very thin lengthwise power supplies. That's what I'm trying to say is the length. No, why, why isn't there a good picture? The length, front to back. 150 millimeters, I believe, on this one. They even have 140 millimeter ones if you go with the 80 plus gold. Uh, all black cabling, which, you know, that's good to have as well. And, uh, hey, $20 million rebate on Newegg right now. Be sure to jump on that. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm already jumping ahead of myself. So that is build number one, which, again, comes in just shy of $3,100. There's all the parts listed right there. Links, of course, to these builds are in the description down below. And in my opinion, this is pretty much the fastest gaming PC that you could build in the Mini ITX form factor. Um, you know, barring a few changes of other things that won't affect the speed, like the case and the power supply. There are, of course, other options you could go for there. But after doing all that, I was like, hmm, maybe I could do a little bit more reasonable build. Also, the Mini ITX form factor. Also, a gaming PC. I'm calling this the second fastest mini ITX PC. So this is build number two. Um, and again, all the parts listed here comes in, again, just shy of $1,100, 1065 So it gives you 30 or 40 bucks to buy a Windows 10 license over on KingWin if you want to. Uh, and this one's based on hardware that's just gonna be a little bit slower. Also, if you hear snoring in the background, that's Hero. He's very happy to be home. Uh, but anyway, I, this is a 6600K base system. Uh, and then the graphics card is an R9 Fury because uh, you can get those for a pretty good deal right now. Anyway, so save about $100 going with the 6600K over the 6700K. You don't get hyper threading, but it's still quad core and you can still overclock it. Available from a variety of merchants, of course, in the $230 to $240 range. Uh, for a cooler, since I did go with a pretty small case here, uh, I went with the Cryo Rig C7, which is a bit slimmer form factor. Uh, also does a really good job though. I've used this uh, in, in one or two builds now and I am happy with the performance. Of course, it's not going to be quite as good performance wise as some of the larger coolers that you can get, but I like it as far as the looks as well as the silence and you're still going to be able to overclock with that and it only costs about $27. 
For the motherboard, I still went with an Asus here. Uh, this is actually the motherboard that I, I used in my wife's build, the uh, Hotbox system, which uh, you can hopefully find a link in the description too if I remember to put that. Uh, I actually modified this to be all black, but you can just leave it as is for this build because you're not going to be able to really see it. Uh, the nice thing about this uh, board is that it does still have pretty nice overclocking support for, of course, your uh, 6600K as well as the memory that uh, you're going to drop in there. And it does have an M.2 slot on the back, which I'm not using in this parts list, but it does mean that you could uh, drop an M.2 SSD in there in the future if you decided to upgrade your storage. For the memory, I have a Mushkin Blackline kit here. I just uh, mainly went with the 16 gig 2x8 uh, DDR4, and I was looking for something. Yeah, I usually like to go a little bit faster than the baseline 2133, so this is 2400, and uh, you can get it for $74 at Newegg. If you happen to buy this today, um, you can also get a, there's a promo code listed here too, so you can get in even another 18% off. Um, if that's not available though, just look for any uh, memory kit that's relatively low profile, 16 gig, uh, DDR4, 2400, 2666, right in that range, and you should be able to find that for around $75. Um, for the storage, I did use a parametric filter. So this is an option you can use on a PC part picker where you just set up a, a series of search definitions. So I went with capacity type and form factor. Uh, for an SSD as well as an additional hard drive. Now since this is the case I'm using is the Node 202 down here from Fractal, it only su supports two 2.5 inch drives, but I wanted to have an SSD to install the operating system on and then a bit more extra storage because um, you know if you're only got a 240 gig SSD in there you're probably going to run out of space pretty quick. So uh, what that ended up giving me was this run down here for the uh, SSD option. Let me sort that by price. Uh, again, all I did was uh, use the capacity sliders here to go down to make sure it's a 240 or 256 gig SSD, uh, and that was pretty much it. Oh, also 2.5 inch form factor. And then you sort that by price, and then uh, right now the AMD R3 240 gig is right there for 60 bucks. Of course, the ever popular 880 Premier SP550 is there for around the same price. Anything you can get down here in this range is going to be good, as long as it's a current generation SATA. Uh, Rev3 SSD, it should be fast enough for your purposes. I did the same thing for a mechanical drive, also 2.5 inch, and I found this Hitachi Travel Star 1 terabyte for just shy of $60. I'm clicking on the wrong page here, but uh, again, not a whole lot of options when it comes to higher capacity uh, 2.5 inch drives, at least if you're looking for 7200 RPM. You can you include 5400 RPM ones as well, but I, I, 7200 RPM hard drives, they're just going to be a good deal faster than 5400 RPM, and you know, it's about the same price as well. Okay, uh, moving on to the graphics card, I went with a Sapphire Radeon R9 Fury, 4 gig, um, because the Fury from AMD is still really nice. Sapphire makes a very nice version of the R9 Fury, 4 gig, uh, it's more visible right here. Look, look, it's got three fans, and even though it's a little bit larger, it's still going to fit in the case. Don't worry, I, I checked the dimensions. $270 is a really good price for the uh, R9 Fury, and I like this version. It's got really good reviews from... And Hero's trying to poke his head on my lap. That's okay. He's been we, he's been away from us for a while. He's He's been a little sad. Anyway, uh, so get that graphics card, and if you don't want to get that graphics card and you want to spend 100 more bucks and make this system even more powerful as a gaming PC, spend about 100 bucks more and find yourself a GTX 1070 from NVIDIA. Uh, okay, the case is the Fractal Node 202. Uh, very popular, small form factor HTPC case, but it can also be used to make uh, some pretty nice gaming systems. Uh, here's, here's a look at the internal layout. So the uh, motherboard goes on this side and it's got our little riser card so you can put the graphics card down here and there's a ton of space for the graphics card in this area and it's got direct ventilation for all them fans and uh, look how tiny it is when it, it's actually standing up and, and stuff. That's pretty cool. Alright, so all that stuff and then lastly, you will need a power supply. Uh, the power supply uh, options are going to well, you have to have SFX for the Node 202, and you have a more limited range of options. So I went with a 600 watt here just so I could support some higher end graphics cards. So this would still work like if you wanted to drop a GTX 1070 in there if you wanted to. These are a little bit more expensive, uh, about 110 to 120 dollars. Uh, Newegg again has a mail-in rebate. Check that out. Newegg with their mail-in rebates all over the place. But all told, your system here is going to cost just 
about $1,100. Again, maybe a little bit less. That's a very powerful gaming system, though, for about $2,000 less than that really, really fastest gaming system I could build. This one's going to give you... 50 to 90 percent of the performance that's going to vary of course depending on what games you're playing and I'm comparing uh, mainly the graphics card in R9 Fury to a Titan X Pascal which is uh, a difficult to make direct comparisons with since I don't actually have either of those cards to test I've mainly been relying on other reports online but Either way you go, uh, that's going to be a really fast system. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think of these builds in the comment section down below. Uh, also, make sure you vote on the, the voting thing for next month. I will be building one of these systems later this month. And if you were watching this video and looking for me to actually build something, sorry, I don't do that in the monthly builds video. These are partsless, but I will direct you to my builds playlist also linked in the description i have lots of builds that i've done there on my builds playlist including my how to build a gaming uh, computer so if you have never built a computer before be sure to check that out uh, because it's got step-by-step -step instructions to walk you through the entire process and then i have a follow-up video that shows you how to install windows and get everything set up just right anyway guys i'm gonna go pass out because uh, i'm starting to get the cold sweats you kind of get when you when you're jet lagged everything's getting a little surreal hero is kicking me under the table. I think he might be dreaming. That's all for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.